Good morning. Open your Bibles to the book of Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12, if you don't have a Bible and you'd like to use one, just raise your hand and our team will bring you one that you can either borrow or you could keep our gift to you. You could also go to the Bible app uh, where we, uh, if you go to the events in the more tab, all of our notes and scriptures will be available for you. Um, if you're watching online, hey, I'm so glad you're here. And it was so cool to hear that, that people all around the world are watching this service. And I'm so glad you guys are here this morning. Hey, before I get in my message, I just have two things that just kind of came to me that I didn't write my notes, but I just felt like saying. One, um, for the men who were there yesterday at the men's retreat, I just want you to know that was probably my favorite men's retreat I've ever been to. And I think that was impactful. And I think we're at, I think we set a standard. So I'm not trying to guilt trip anyone who wasn't there. I think that's just how we're gonna do men's retreat from now on. Uh, and so I hope you can come next, uh, next year for that. Also, um, I wanna thank you guys who helped us with All Stars. Uh, we're gonna do another one this Friday. And here's the thing, words getting around our city. I know because I've been, I've been bumping into people in public and I've been giving them a car and they go, yeah, I've heard about this. And so now we're getting people who want to come and they want to bring their kids and they want to bring their, their adults to this, but we need more volunteers. So if you can go to our website, I would love for you to volunteer for it. It's going to be this Friday. Uh, I'm telling you, this is going to make a huge impact in our city because we care about those that sometimes people sometimes don't care about. So with that being said, uh, I have three kids. I don't know if you knew that. I have three kids. And there's a couple things you learn about having three kids. One, you're outnumbered. Like you even try to get one of them to come on your side. You're like, hey, man, I, I buy the ki- cookies and candy. Like if you come over here, if you help us out. Like you want to do that. That's one thing I've learned. Another thing I've learned is they are three different people. Even my twins are just different. They have different thought processes. They have different things that make them happy and things that bother them, which when you're outnumbered, you're like, oh, can you guys just, can you guys get mad at the same thing? Like, (laughs) but one thing I also know is they have three different patterns of like patterns of doing life, especially my son. My son has a pattern for every day. Like when he wakes up, to when he goes to bed. And it's not the same pattern every day, but every day in the week, it's the same pattern. Let me give you an example. Like, like this morning, every Sunday, my son wakes up. I go, do you want a donut? He goes, yeah. And I give him a donut and he eats the mess out of it. It's just chocolate all over his face and stuff like that. And, 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 and he's eating. And then while he's eating his chocolate donut, he wants to watch the live action Beauty and the Beast. Like he just wants to watch it and he's eating his donut and it's all over his face. And then, and then he'll do that until we go to church. And once we get to church, I always thought like, do you want to finish that movie? And he's like, no. And he, what he does, he will go up to my office before kids starts and he wants to watch Boss Baby every Sunday without fail. I don't even have to ask him. I just turn it on. Like, like this morning, plate was in his hand, turned on the TV. He was, and he didn't be like, you know. but also when we're driving here, we have to listen to this playlist I made for the kids ministry. From the beginning, you cannot go into track four or he's going to be like, Hey, he does do that. Yay. So he lets us know. But it, and, and here's the thing. There's nothing wrong with patterns. Patterns are sometimes good. They help us with our growth. They help us with our maturity. Uh, and, and sometimes, you know, but sometimes patterns can be bad. But also, sometimes patterns can be unpredictable. Some of us are in a, we've been in a pattern so long that we don't even know we're in it or we don't know how to get out of it. And that's what I want to talk about in today's message I'm calling Rooted in Purity. Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for this opportunity to speak your word in such a mighty and powerful way. And Lord, I thank you, Lord, that you've put this word on my heart. But I pray, Lord, as people hear it, they will not be discouraged. They will not be angry. But Lord, they would be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry because of it. And I pray this this word would challenge them to make you the center of all things. We love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. So Romans chapter 12, I'm going to start reading verse 1. It says, Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern 
of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is for you, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Now I know I said the word purity, and some of you guys were like, all right, let's get this over with. All right, okay, okay, we're talking about purity, okay. So uh, what are you gonna tell me what I need to stop doing? Because if you're like me, that was how I defined purity. I always define purity of, okay, I have to stop doing things. Okay, he's going to tell me, he's going to give me a list, and i got to stop doing it. But the issue with that mindset is when we, leave it out of, when we leave God out of it and we try to walk in this lifestyle of abstinence for God and not with God, we're actually doing purity out of alignment. So looking at Romans chapter 12, we see to be rooted in purity is to not to stop, but it's to start. Now, what do I mean by start? Well, if you're taking notes, there's three things that we need to pursue to be rooted in purity. Three things that we see in the scripture that I think are so important. So if you're taking notes, number one is this. To pursue a rooted lifestyle of purity, we need to pursue a full surrender to God. It says in the scripture in verse 1, offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. The posture of sacrifice is to hand over and to place in someone else's hands. So Paul is encouraging the believers to hand over everything to God. That God, I'm handing over my mind, my eyes, my ears, my hands, my feet, my heart, my everything. And Jesus talks about this in Luke chapter 9, verse 23. He says, then he said to all of them, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. So to take up our cross and follow him means we need to surrender to him and live out not my will, but your will. So to be rooted in purity is to pursue a full surrender to God where he doesn't just get some of us, he gets all of us. That he, gets, he is the center of everything we do, meaning I'm not going to just hand things over to him, but I'm going to be obedient to whatever he's asking me to do. So if he's asking me to go in a direction and to start doing things, I'm going to be obedient to it. If he's asking me to stop doing things, I'm going to be obedient to it because he is at the center of my life and I've given him all of me, not just some of me. And so when we pursue a full surrender, it leads into number two, which is to pursue a different pattern. It says, do not conform to the pattern of this world. See, the word conform in the Greek is a word, sushe matiso, which is to be molded. So it's kind of like having like a jello mold in a way. And so molds are made so that you can pour into it and it creates that shape over and over again. So Paul's essentially saying, don't let the things of this world constantly be poured into you. That there's going to be things of this world that he's saying, no, 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 don't be molded to it. Don't be positioned to receive it. It's not good for you. And there are certain choices and lifestyles and addictions and mindsets that are not normal for this world. Or they may be normal for this world, but they're honestly detrimental to the body of Christ. So to pursue pursue a different pattern, we need to identify the pattern that we may be in. And I love, Pastor Sonny talked about this a couple weeks ago in Galatians chapter 5, verses 19 through 21. It says, when you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like these. Let me tell you again. So he's kind of like, listen up. As I have before, that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. I think he gives all those lists because for us, we need to identify things before they go too far. I got to admit something to you. Uh, A couple months ago, uh, my check engine light came on in my car. I know. Dudes are like, seriously? And I'm like, yeah, I know. And I let it go for for a while. I was just like, yeah, you know, I'll get to it. I mean, car's not smoking yet. 
we're good. But can I tell you, every day it bothered me because it's, it's, it's not like a, a colorful light. It's this bright orange that's like, your car's gonna die. Your car's falling apart. Like that's what comes to my head when I see it. So I'm like, ugh. And I just, and, and so as I'm driving, I just notice that some things in my car just also stop working. Like when the winter started, like it took everything to, to get it warm in my car. And I'm looking, I'm like, it should be warmer than this. Why is it not warm? My father-in-law picked me up in the car and he goes, hey, you know your cruise control's not working? I go, what? Like, what did you do? Because <laughs> I want to, yeah, it's your fault. So cruise control's not working. Air conditioning's not working well. And then I found out the self-start, the whole reason you get cars in the winter is to have a self-start so you can turn it on and let it warm up and you go in. That stopped working. And can I tell you, I was at a point where I was like, I'm, gonna, I, I, I'm just going to get rid of this car. I got to take it back. I can't have this car anymore. And then I went and got my oil changed before the men's retreat. They pop up the hood and the guy goes, hey, do you have your check engine light on? I go, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's been on for a while. And it, it, he goes, I, I think I know the reason. See, this one thing, and it's like this big, was unplugged from this part in the filter. I know mechanic guys are like, it's called a, I know, I don't know what it's called. He goes, so I'm going to plug it in. I'm going to put it back where it needs to go. And your check engine light should turn off. So I'm not kidding. He does that. Eventually the check engine light goes on. And I just was like, I was bored driving back from men's retreat. He said, you know what? I'm going to see if my cruise control works. It started working again. I pulled the car over. I want to see if the check, I want to see if the self start works. It starts working. And it wasn't that cold yesterday, but I want to see how hot can this car get? (laughs) And get really hot. And it's interesting how one thing I ignored that I didn't think was a big deal actually started to carry over into other things in the vehicle. And I almost got to the point where I gave up. I wonder if there's some things that we're ignoring and we're trying to look past because we're thinking it's not a big deal, but it's starting to carry over into some things and we're starting to question our faith and our relationship with God because we're saying, well, maybe this isn't working. God say, no, no, I just need you to identify this thing. I want you to identify this pattern. And God wants to speak to you. That's why he needs to, we need to surrender all to him. Because when he speaks to you, he goes, no, 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 no. I know you think it's just a tiny thing. But that tiny thing is affecting other things in your life. And you're having a hard time praying and worshiping and growing and going to church because it's affecting other things. But here's what I know is he's saying when you identify those things, it will put everything else in alignment. So we need to identify the things that, the patterns that we may be in that God's not calling us to be in, which will lead to number three, to pursue a life transformed. So it says, do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. The word transformed is a Greek word, metamorpho. It's where we get the word metamorphosis. So it's like, you know, when a caterpillar becomes a butterfly, which, by the way, how many of you guys didn't believe that when you were a kid? Like your teacher was telling you, hey, this ugly caterpillar is going to become this beautiful butterfly. And I was like, yeah, right. Because we didn't have the internet. We just had books and pictures and people drew it. And I'm like, yeah, I can draw me flying. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> so, like, I did. As a kid, I was like, one, this isn't true. And two, it's not fair. Why can't we become ugly and then become beautiful and fly away? Like, I, side note. I've always wanted to fly. Like, it's a thing I've always wanted. And I would wish it and pray it. And, and I was even at a point, I remember one birthday, <laughs> my mom said, make a wish. And if you blow out all your candles, your wish will come true. So what was my wish? To fly. And no joke, I was like, <gasps> and it happened. And I instantly, they're like, yay. And I ran outside and I went like this. Hold on, it's new, it's new. I was so mad. I didn't want to open my presents. I was like, you guys eat the cake. Like I was just like, (laughs) I was lied to. But I had a hard time believing that a caterpillar, I mean, it's ugly, it's nasty, it's green, it's ooh. 
can turn this butterfly that's beautiful and pretty, and what are you talking about? See, I had a hard time believing it until I saw it. I, I, I actually cop- captured a caterpillar, and I was like, you better work. <laughs> and can I tell you, it worked. It blew my mind, but the, the problem was is that I did it in my room, and so when it became a butterfly, I was like, <laughs> and I was like, ah. Oh. But can I tell you, once I saw it, I was like, I believe. I believe that an ugly caterpillar can become this wonderful, beautiful butterfly. And that's what God's saying. Here's, and that's why my whole point about this purity thing is God's saying, but let me transform you. Let me take your ugly mindsets, your nasty habits, your ugly and gross decisions, and let me transform it into a beautiful lifestyle. Let me transform you in a way where you are no longer bound or held by these things. But let me transform you so that when you, when you walk in it, you go, whoa, this is good and pleasing and perfect. See, that, a mind renewed enables us to discern the will of God. And released from the control of the world around us, we can come to know what God has in mind for us. And we can find that his will is good and pleasing and perfect, which I love those three things because when, when God transforms us, when he changes us, when he metamorphoses us, we actually begin to change some habits and things in our lives. Number one, he'll transform our morality. It's good because it brings about moral and spiritual growth. That, that's the, the, the mindset is, you know what? God, you're transforming and reminding me that you are good more than anything else in this world. No, more than any substance, more than any person, more than any mindset, lifestyle, you are good. And I'm hungry for that. I'm hungry more for that than anything this world brings, which kind of brings you to that when he transforms you, he'll transform our appetite. It's pleasing to God because it's an expression of his nature. So when we are transformed, we'll have a different taste for things. Now he'll transform our appetite and you'll find yourself having no desire for the things you thought you couldn't live without. There are things you go, man, I, I need this every day. And then, and then now you're out of place because you've allowed God to transform you and you go, hey, uh, do you need this? You're like, no, I, I, I don't. I thought I did, but I just don't have a taste for it anymore. And number three, he'll transform our dependence. It's perfect because no one could possibly improve on what God desires to happen. Nothing comes close to the desires of God. So I am transformed to this dependence on him. And sometimes we think dependence is weak until you are dependent on strong things. Like when you have like a big friend, you're like, yeah, I can take you all on right now. I got this guy with me. Imagine you have a couple big friends. You're like, watch out. Yeah, open the door. <laughs> kidding. That's not even in my notes. <laughs> Psalm 16, 5 says, you, Lord, are all I have, and you give me all I need. My future is in your hands. I know that scripture scares you. I know for some of you that scripture is like, whoa, what, are you serious? You want us to put all our chips in God? Yes, because watch what happens when you do. Watch what happens when he is all you have and he's all you need and everything going forward is in his hands. I imagine what's gonna happen with your mindset, with your, the way you look at world, at life, your, your, your passions, your desires, your marriage, your job, your kids. I mean, imagine what happens when you say, you know what, I don't like this right now. And I want to go to this, but I, I got to put everything in your hands. And I got to trust that, you, that you're going to do everything that I need and more. So those are the three things that God's wanting us to pursue. And it kind of reminds me of a story uh, uh, of a family. <laughs> There's a story of a family where they're about to eat dinner. And the mom's bringing the plates out and the son goes, Mom, why do we always eat dinner before dessert? Mom looks at him and says, well, you know, dessert's kind of like a reward for your dinner. He goes, yeah, yeah, I know, but like, I always eat my dinner and I always eat my dessert. It always happens, so why not we switch it around today? Wife looks at her husband, kind of smiles and goes, okay, you know what? 
Why not? So tonight, our dessert will be our dinner, and our dinner will be our dessert. So she switches the plates, removes the chicken and vegetables, and brings out this hot brownie with the vanilla ice cream on top. Everyone's eating. They're laughing. They're giggling. They're like, I can't believe we're doing this. Like, they're, they're eating it. And as they're all done, the mom gets up to take the dinner to bring out dessert. And as she's getting the plate, she gets to the son. And the son goes, sorry, mom. I'm full. I think I'm going to pass on dessert tonight. As silly as that story is, when we try to pursue purity out of order, it's not going to be as effective as God wants it to be. It's so funny, when I started studying this message, I was going to go to Romans 12.2. 12, I mean, I even have a shirt, 12.2. That was going to be my starting point. And I was kind of compelled and, 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 and moved by the Holy Spirit to say, no, 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 no. Don't do it out of order. you got to start with verse 1. Because if you start with verse 2, you're just motivating the people to do it without me. That they're going to have a formula of how to get purity the right way. Here are some steps to walk in purity. And God's saying, no, that's the point. Is I know you can't do purity without me. I know you can't. You can't do it long enough. You can't do it well enough. So you got to do it in the right order. So you, meaning you have to start by saying, God, I give you everything. I don't want you to be to the side of my life. I want you to be the center of my life. I surrender all to you. And when we do that, God goes, thank you. Because now I'm going to reveal some things in your life that I'm telling you may hurt you. And you're going to go, oh, really? Whoa, I, I didn't think that was a big deal. Like, well, that's a big deal. And he's going to go, yeah. But here's the good news. Because you've let me in, I'm going to transform your thinking. And those things you thought you needed, you're not going to need anymore. You're not going to need those, those, those lifestyles, those addictions. You're going to go, yeah, I used to love doing that. I love those testimonies. They're the best. Man, I used to love doing blank until God came in. And I have no desire for it. And I know the world's going to look at some of us and go, you're boring now. Yeah, I'm also healthy. I'm also whole. I'm also walking in freedom. I'm also, like, have joy. You might remember when we used to be cool. <laughs> yeah, I'm also an adult now. Like, I don't know. What's this cool thing? That's what God wants to do. He doesn't want you to be like, all right, God, I got the orders. I'm marching into that purity. Get out of here, sin. Hi-ya, hi he doesn't want that. Because what's going to happen is going to be something where you're like, all right, I have to get rid of this. And without God, you're realizing, no, I can't do it without him. That's too strong. That's too big. But when I do it by his will and his ways, and I let him be the center of my life, that's when we can start really walking in his will, which is good, pleasing, and perfect. I want to close with this. So I've been a Jesus person for about 25 years. And I wish that my story was as soon as I let Jesus into my life and I made him my Lord and my Savior, that he took away all my struggles and all my addictions and all my pains. I'm not saying he can't do that, but he just didn't do that in my life. And one of the things I wish he took away instantly, and he didn't, was my addiction to pornography. I was introduced to pornography at a very young age when my brother's friend let my brother borrow a movie. So at 11 years old, I was introduced to pornography, and it was in my life for years. Even when I gave my life to Jesus, it was still there, it was still around, and it was still my go-to. And I remember getting this pattern of, okay, all right, I messed up. I'm going to go to God for forgiveness. I'm going to ask him to, to help me not to do that again. But I just kept doing it again and again and again. And I kept going, okay, God, I'm going to stop. Okay, I'm going to stop. I'm stopping. But then sometimes I'd be up too late. I'd have a stressful day. I'd, something would happen. And I found myself going back to the thing I said I would never do again. And I remember I was at this point in my life where I was going, God, I don't know. Am I ever going to be set free from this? Like, am I ever going to lay this down and never do it again. And then I, I heard a message once that said that when, when God is not the sin of your life and he's just a part of your life, you're not really walking in everything he has for you. And I had asked myself, is God the sinner of my life? 
Is he a center of all things? And so from that day, I said, all right, I'm surrendering all to you. Your way, your will, not mine, whatever you need me to do. And here's what I love. I wish I could say when I did that, God's like, poof, desire's gone. He didn't do that. But what he did is he didn't, he, he showed me the roots that would lead to my addiction. He would remind me, you know why you're going there. It's your escape with stress. It's your escape with worry, with fear. It's an escape. And so then he started identifying some roots that he wanted me to pull out of my life. I'm so honored and happy to, to say I am porn free. And it's been this way for many years, not because of me, but because I made him the center of all things. And here's what I can tell you. I have barriers, I have borders, I have things that I will not allow myself to look at. But here's what I love too. Because he has my whole body, when, when I see it with my eyes, God says, look away. You don't need that. When I hear it with my ears, God says, don't listen to that. When I'm tempted with my hands, he says, you don't need to do that. I've called you to bigger and greater things. You don't need that. When I gave him my mind, he, re he revealed the realities of that addiction, that it is harmful, that it is hurting many people, and it's a source of sex trafficking. And again, it's not, I'm not, some of you guys are like, I know I got real quiet. Like, hey, I got my kid in here. Why are you saying the P word? <laughs> Sorry. But the reality is that some of us, we have things that we think we're never gonna be free of. And God is saying, yes, by your will, maybe not. But if you let me be the center of your life, if you're obedient to my words and my ways, I'm gonna help you not just walk in purity, but be rooted in it. Can I pray with you? So salvation is allowing God to transform you, to have that metamorphosis moment in your life where he takes you from where you are right now to where he wants you to be in him. And all salvation is, is just believing that he came, he lived a sinless life, he died on the cross so that we could be a new person. And all he asks us is we welcome him in to be our Lord and our Savior. Lord meaning, you know what? I'm giving you control. I'm going to let you be the center of my life. And Savior meaning, I'm going to allow you to take all my sins so I no longer live in guilt and shame. So with everyone's head bowed, if that's you and you're, and you're saying, you know, I've never done that, but I want to do that today, I want to ask you to do one of two things. The first thing is I want you to just raise your hand, make eye contact with me, and then as a church, we're just going to say a simple prayer together. Nothing magical. It's just when we mean it from our heart, God's wanting to move in our lives. So if you're here this morning, you're saying, you know what, Pastor Dallas, I've never started my relationship with Jesus. I've never made him my Lord and Savior, but I want to do that right now. If that's you, can I just have you raise your hand and look at me real quick? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Church, can we say this prayer together? Say, Jesus, thank you. I love you. I give you my life to do whatever you need to do. I welcome you to be my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. If you made that decision, we'd love to help you. In fact, Pastor Sunny will come up and she's gonna talk about some things that we wanna help you go from where you are to where God wants you to be. But can I have you bow your heads one more time? Maybe you're here and you're saying, no, I am a Jesus person. I love Jesus, but, but like you, you've been, like me, you've been stuck in the same sin in your life over and over. And you need God to have all of you so he can transform your life into the path of purity. If that's you, can I just have you raise your hand so I can pray with you? Ooh, some bold people. I love it. Lord, I thank you so much for these people who are saying, I'm not living this way anymore. I'm not, I'm not going to be bound or held by this anymore. God, I'm believing you are going to make me rooted in purity because I'm going to make you the center of all things. So Lord, I pray that you would speak to them now and you remind them of the things that they need to start doing and the things they need to remove of their lives so they can see your will, which is good and pleasing and perfect. We love you, we thank you in Jesus' name, amen.